Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and this is my 27th year anniversary of not really giving a damn about Batman Mask of the Phantasm. So uh, I saw it in theaters when it first came out, and the weird thing is, I, for some reason, I remember the theater I saw it in. <laughs> it was in Corpus Christi, I remember the exact theater, I remember I saw it during the day, and I remember walking out going... Okay, yeah. Um, uh, so, uh, Batman Mask of the Phantas Phantasm came out of Batman the Animated Series, which was uh, basically a huge hit right from the beginning. This was originally planned to do, be straight to, it would have been VHS back then, and then somebody got galaxy-brained over there at Warner Brothers and said, let's uh, pump up the budget a little bit, put a little bit of 3D, uh, not 3D as in, you know, putting on glasses, but just some th 3D models. Uh, in a beginning scene and let's put it in the theaters and it was a super disaster. I remember I remembered it being a flop and I looked it up And yes, it was a flop. It made just single digits um, and was quickly out of the theaters um, But then <laughs> people used to talk about it and one of the things everyone said for Decades was you know, that was the best Batman movie. That was the real Batman movie all, and, and it was just became one of these things about like geek lore. You just had to agree with it. But then everyone I talk to in real life, they're like, yeah, I thought it was boring too. So basically what it is, it's very, very strange. You know, it's about 80 something minutes. You know, it, it meets the length of a feature film. But it is somehow one episode's worth of story. <laughs> I mean, maybe you could have gotten a two episode story out of this. So what we get is just some, the funny thing is that it was stretched, but that wasn't the problem. That wasn't the problem I had with it. One of the things that was fun was just watching an extended chase of Batman through the streets of Gotham by the police. And he has to take off his cowl, which is connected to his cape. And then he's running through the streets. It's just as, you know, without a mask. There were a lot of things that were just kind of stretched that you wouldn't have gotten in a regular, you know, 22 minute episode. So that part I liked just fine. I liked just seeing long chases. I liked seeing like every punch of a fight. You know, in the TV show, it would have been like three punches. Some of these just regular fist fight in an alley will last like a, a whole minute. They had uh, some car crashes, some car chases. All that stuff was fine. Uh, there was just basically no story. The story was a woman that they've never mentioned before that was the love of his life uh, became the phantasm. Um, uh, if I remember correctly, the secret... Okay, everyone knows that it's Andrea Beaumont. Okay, whatever. I actually went to the movie not knowing the secret. So, uh, But when you get like 10 minutes in, it's, it's really, really obvious. They just set up one person who could be the, the phantasm, you know, the... But uh, the other thing that bothered me about this is that they kind of redid a story called Batman Year Two by, I believe, Mike W. Barr, Alan Davis, and then later Todd McFarlane. Uh, and that was actually a really good story. And they just stripped out everything to just make it generic. I mean, most of this movie is just <laughs> generic, cliche Italian mobsters with the most half-assed Joker origin ever. It's not even origin. It's like it was just him before he was the Joker. That's no transformation. He's not especially frightening as his pre-Joker self. He's just, you know, a mafia guy with a long nose, and and that's it. Um, there's no Robins. There's no Batgirl. There's no Rogues Gallery except for Joker. In fact, I think I remember back in the day reading in the interviews that Joker was kind of pushed in at the last uh, moment. Uh, it actually works without Joker. Again, he's kind of a, a wild card, which w works as well. Um, but yeah, it's basically 20 minutes of story of a really... Okay, so you got the really generic, the lost love that's never been mentioned before who's back in his life. You got the uh, the person comes back into your life as, you know, as this new character is on the scene. Oh, I wonder if they're connected. And then you're like, that's not justice, that's revenge. But isn't what you do revenge... Uh, uh, no, like they don't even really commit to that bit uh, at all. I mean, one of the things I remember the creators uh, talking about this is they liked that since it was a movie, they got to do things that standards and practices didn't let them do for the, you know, the, uh, the TV show. Um, so you got to see stuff like 
Joker's tooth gets knocked out in a fight, like way into the movie, and then you get to see him missing one tooth for the you know next four minutes of the scene. Does that work? I mean, it's not really a tooth. It's just like this square. It has as much dimension as you know Doodle Bob. So it doesn't feel like he lost a tooth. It just feels like there's a part of the drawing that's missing. Uh, now it was cool. You got to see some actual connections of uh, um, punches and kicks. So that was solid, but really, just, just no, just no, no, not at all. It just, uh, it just, it just feels like what it is. Something that you know would would have been okay as straight to VHS. Tried to get pumped into more. It really wasn't there. They changed a story that was good into making it super mediocre. Um, the animation is very rubbery. Now, weirdly enough. I kind of like that. Like I said, at the beginning they had 3D, which was just some 3D models traced over to look like they were drawn. But then when they do like a car chase, like it's like a hand-drawn car. Now they do all these straight to DVD, straight to streaming, DC animated movies, and I'm not really like them. They're very assembly line, but you know, they'll get a 3D model of the vehicles and a lot of times like the guns, actually most of the time the guns and swords. So they'll be very consistent from shot to shot. Uh, but you don't get that squash and stretch that's really needed in classic 2D animation. Um, uh, so when you'll see a car go around a corner, like it'll kind of like it's like it's a little rubbery, and and that's fine. I mean, uh, it's it's the quality of TV. It's ninety five percent of this is the quality of an animated uh, series. So I kind of liked like the the wonky animation, but super generic. I don't think it remotely lives up to the hype. And honestly, if it would have been the classic Batman movie that everyone was waiting for, I think it would have made more than whatever five or six million dollars it, it made. Uh, it's not funny. It's not fun. It can occasionally be kind of exciting in just the extended sequence part of it. But a lot of this stuff is just just grim death and just stretched all to hell like some kind of, you know, I mean, do you ever I remember one time when I was going to college, I thought. I thought this paper was supposed to be 15 pages and it was 50. Uh, and uh, literally like the night before I had to vamp. Well, there was some wiggle room, you know. You could, you know, like, if you got within a couple pages, you were good. And I just, I just vamped the hell and I just patted it. I actually got a good score. I mean, it's not like I, I did in eight minutes. I literally stayed up the entire night adding, you know, 30 more pages. Um, but I would not say that quantitatively there was more information conveyed it was there was more facts and more footnotes but there really wasn't much more to the the thesis paper um even though it had just a lot more length but um not uh i mean what did i watch this i think it was free on like hulu or something like that it was on one of my streaming platforms that i already have uh, i don't know it's no I'd say pick any two random episodes of Gotham and you're probably going to have more fun and there'll be more uh, uh, originality. I just I just don't like this. Um, and uh, I honestly think that like half of its hype is just that like in the late 90s and you know, early 2000s, like this was like part of geek lore. You had to like it. No choices. You couldn't say you didn't like it. But um, I'm interested in what it is now. A lot of people, because of the lockdown, they're revisiting movies they haven't watched in decades and reappraising them. Mine is the same. I just think this is boring and padded and rubbery and not fun and all weird, uh, but not in a cool way. So anyway, thanks for watching. And uh, next video... Oh, I'm going to watch that Mortal Kombat live action from what, 1995. I'll watch that tonight and review it tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Bye.